it's Carly from the Poetry of Nice, and I have my weekly sales update video for you all today. Um, so this is Etsy, Poshmark, and eBay, the three platforms that I currently sell on. And I'll do the same as I do most weeks, where I will show you the item, I'll let you know where I picked it up, I'll try and remember how much I paid for it originally, although that is escaping me right now because I've had so many things come through the door with sourcing um, heavily in the season of rummage sales and yard sales that quite frankly, I've lost track of, in, of individual prices. Um, but I will tell you that my annual average cost of goods is $1 per piece. So you can bear that in mind if that helps a little bit. Um, and I will try and let you know how long the item was listed because I know that's helpful information too. And I will, of course, tell you how much the buyer paid when this item sold. Um, and at the end of the video, I'll give you all of my numbers, like my gross sales for the week, and then my sort of estimate of a net profit as well. All right, so uh, first for, uh, things first is Etsy had one sale, just this pair of vintage jeans here. Oh, sorry, I should say jean, so, uh, jean shorts, black denim shorts. And they sold for $24.95. And honestly, they've been listed for a long time, way over a year, probably like a year and a half at least. Um, and they sold for $24.95. So I guess it just took a while. They sold for a decent price. Um, I am not sure if I would pick them up again. I'm not sure if I could help myself really. I really like those high rise vintage um, denim jean shorts. And I always think they're going to do well. Um, but honestly, unless they're like Levi's or something like that, they tend to sit a little bit for me. But you know, $24.95 is not too bad. All right, and then we're going to move on to Poshmark next. Um, so this was not an awesome sale. I'm just going to be honest. So this is um, like vintage. It was an older piece, a fresh produce, uh, seashell crop top. It was obviously, you can see there, a lot shorter. Um, I thought it was cute. It's a decent brand. It just took a really long time to move. And it finally moved for a best offer from the buyer of $9. So there we go. But I went ahead and took it simply because it's been in my closet and eBay and Posh, um, and Etsy, I should say, and eBay for a very long time now. So I'm happy to see it go. Um, I will say on Poshmark as well, I do send out offer to likers. I say this every week, but, you know, full disclosure. Uh, when I send out an offer to like, I also include a shipping credit, as you must, of $1.80. Um, so just in case you're wondering how much I would pay out of pocket for that. Um, however, people send me offers as well. So some of these items will fall on either side of the fence there. All right, next item. Hopefully a better sale. <laughs> okay, so the next three items were part of a bundle. So there was this Reebok um, sort of retro style track jacket. Next item in the bundle was this Prana. Um, I'm going to show you the label as well. It's kind of like in a yoga, kind of like athleisure type feel to this brand. This is what it looks like. Oh, she says as it thinks about it. There we go. Um, like a military style coat. The comps for this actually weren't too strong, but I still listed it a little bit high at 35 just to kind of wait it out for the season, pretty much. And the last item in the bundle was this Royal Robins, which is like an outdoorsy brand. It was like, uh, it had like a minky feel to it um, type fleece. And you can kind of see the texture on here as well. Very, very fluffy and cozy. So those three items together, they bundled them. And um, my asking price was 85. They sent me a best offer of 65, which I was very happy to take. And off they went to their new home. All right, next item. Um, this was a dead stock piece. Dead stock meaning it was vintage. It was from the 90s, but it was still new with tags unworn. Um, and yeah, there wasn't much else to say, really. It wasn't a particularly wonderful brand. I don't think I was familiar with the brand, but like I said, it was new with tags. It had that midi length to it. And then it had these little buckles on the side that you could sort of tighten to cinch in that waist. It was just a pretty neat piece. You can see the keywords I used there, like midi dress, buckle sides, grunge, that kind of thing. Um, and this offer a best offer of $25. Uh, Talbot's just a very simple, like um, semi sheer sort of check type print pop over blouse, um, $15 on that, which is a very sort of average price that I would get for a Talbot's piece. And Taylor, I picked up these career pants. Um, they had nice print, first of all, that geometric blue and white print, but also they were a size 16 tall, which is a great size. Um, I got these from a yard sale. I do remember that. And um, uh, yes, it was 18. Someone has sent me best offer, I think, of 18. Um, and I went ahead and accepted that, which is absolutely fine for a pair of Ann Taylor pants. This was an interesting sale to me. Um, so I picked this up at a rummage sale. I just thought it was quirky and nice. It was a single stitch, so it was a vintage piece, and you could tell by the label as well. Um, no brand that I would ever know, um, but I just really liked the sort of graphics on it, if you will. Here is a close-up of them as well. Now, I did struggle for keywords on this piece, and you can see some distressing and whatnot, but that 
has barely ever stopped me when it comes to a cool vintage piece. Um, I did style it with the cuffs rolled there in that initial photo just to kind of, you know, give it a little bit more shape and all that. Um, but in the end, I went with vintage doll mother and children distress, <laughs> distress graphic tee um, because honestly, I struggled a little bit. But I listed it for 25 and within half an hour of listing it, somebody sent me an offer for $20 and I was happy to take it. Um, okay, this was from a little thrift store that I'd never been to before. It was a church thrift store, um, and I had to really dig to find stuff. I walked away with about three pieces after being in there for half an hour, and this was one of them. Um, and so I did not have a lot of money in this, but it was a vintage faux mink fur coat. Um, and I wasn't sure at first because it didn't have the fabric content on it, but when I researched the brand, and let me see if I can find I think it was Olympia or something. There you go, Olympia. Um the brand is very well known for its faux furs, especially its faux minks, and they sort of average that 80s time frame. So I went ahead and listed it, and I did disclose down here as well um, that the fabric content is missing, um, just so that people would know, basically. But I had listed it at 60, and someone sent me a best offer of 40. It was a counter offer, I think. I sent out a best offer of 50 with a shipping discount. They came back at 40. Again, happy to take that. It was very heavy, but it was under the five pounds, so I did not have to pay additional shipping, which is good when it comes to Poshmark. Um, so I shared this in my last haul video, and I said that I was probably going to be sneaky and put the word Arizona in because it had that kind of like desert house golf thing happening. Um, and Poshfest this year, if you uh, are unfamiliar, is going to be held in Arizona. And it sold in half a day. So I'm not sure if that was down to the keyword choice that I had or if it was just that someone happened to like the piece. But I'm glad that it moved so quickly. Um, and it moved for $20 as well. Um, this was Grayson Threads, I think, which was it just like sold at Target originally. But it was a neat graphic tee. And so I did go ahead and list it a little bit high just to see what I could get for it. So a nice, fast sale. Um, and I picked this up last weekend, I think, at a yard sale. This piece definitely sold out of season. Um, it was Talbot's, again, it was size 1X, great size for Talbot's. I do like Talbot's plus size. Um, and obviously it was like a novelty print with the penguins on it and it was a lamb's wool blend as well. So it had plenty going for it. Um, and this sold on an offer for $24. Um, this was in the lot that I got from um, the lady I bought a bunch of clothes from for $50. So I'm still just steadily selling those as I go. Um, this was Dolce Vita, which I think is a decent brand. But this was the Four Target collaboration, which I did put in bold letters. And I also made... Um, uh, made sure that I mentioned it somewhere else down there as well. And you could see in my photos too. But um, they were a really nice style with this kind of caged toe um, situation happening. And they were a great size as well. They were size 11. And so um, I settled on an offer of 15, which was, I'm very happy with that. I think I had less than 50 cents in that when it came to everything I bought from that lady. So just nice steady sales as I go. And this item I picked up last week as well at the weekend. I usually don't pick up Soma and I usually kick myself when I do because it sits for ages. But for whatever reason, this piece sold quickly. It sold in just a day or so, day or two, I would say, of listing. Um, I'll go ahead and show you as well that label. There we go. That's what that looks like. It was a size large, really, really comfy, had a very cute like crochet detail on the neckline and also on the cuffs as well. And just a very nice print all over. There's the cuff there that you can see. Um, and I think I paid maybe a dollar for this max, less than that, really, um, when everything was averaged out. And I took a best offer of 15 because, like I said, Soma sits usually for me. So when I get a good offer, I'm going to go ahead and take it. Um, this was also from last weekend. So another nice fast flip. Um, Victoria's Secret pink, just that spell out kind of like raglan baseball shirt style top. Um, this was 25 cents at a yard sale averaged out a little bit higher for the whole haul, but 25 cents is initially what I paid for this and $18 and this sold within half an hour of listing. So uh, I've had this dress for quite a while. It had quite a lot of activity when I first listed it and then it just kind of died down a little bit and the comps looked quite promising. So I listed it around $40. It was 100% silk and it was a good size, size 12. It was J Crew, and this was the official name of it, the blouse and dress in polka dot. Um, and I got that from the style number that you can see, like there's a tag in here with all your fabric content and things. And usually there's a style number there for like J Crew, Madewell, all that kind of stuff. And you can pull up, um, the actual name of the items and get your comps really clearly doing that as well. Um, but it's sat. I've had a few offers, low ball offers, and eventually here we are, probably a good seven, eight months later and someone offered 25 and I figured that that was fair at this point and went ahead and sold it. Um, these were from just 
two weeks ago, I think I picked them up. Lucky brand, they were a small size, size six, um, black studded cross strap cork wedges. And the straps were actually fabric. They look like they should be leather with the studs, but they weren't. They were fabric and they had some stretch to them. Um, and I can't remember how much I paid for it, like I said, but it wasn't a rummage sale and did end up being a filler bag situation in the end. Um, but $15 was an offer I got for these. And I'm happy to take that because I have another pair of Lucky Brand wedges as well that I've had in my store now for over a year, I think, and I haven't been able to move them. So I was happy to jump on a decent offer. <laughs> um, this Coach Logo Canvas mini bifold wallet by bifold, I mean, it has two sides to it. A single fold to it there um it was in decent condition i picked this up at a yard sale and um it's been listed now probably for about four to five weeks tops and uh, again it was settled on a best offer of twenty dollars Oh, these glasses I've had for a long time. They've been on Etsy, and I really, really thought that they would sell on Etsy. Now, I do think they were a youth size. This person's already received them, has left um, a five-star uh, review or whatever you want to call it. And I did put in all of the approximate measurements because I had a feeling they were a youth size. They were just a smaller set frame. Um, but they were a 90s Disney frame. They had like a floral confetti look to them almost. They were really, really cool. Super 80s, 90s vibe. Um I thought I was going to sell these on Etsy pretty high, I'll be honest. I usually sell eyeglasses on Etsy for like $34.95 or so. I thought these were going to go for more than that, and they didn't. They have just sat and sat and sat, and so eventually someone offered me 15 on Poshmark, and I took it. It's literally been two years since I've had these, so hopefully they absolutely love them. Um, swimsuits for all. This is a pretty good swimsuit brand, especially in those plus sizes. This was a size 20, also from the lot that um, I bought from the lady for $50. Really nice ruching, very, very flattering suit. Um, and this was a best offer of 25, which again, very happy to take. And the final Poshmark sale of the week um, are these Miss Me Wing Bling button flap uh, denim shorts okay so you definitely want to put the button flap pocket in your listing title and description as well because that's something that people do look for and pretty much the word bling if it has bling like embellishment and rhinestones anything like that go ahead and include that as well um these actually i picked up at 25 cents last week at a yard sale again averaged out a little higher but 25 cents was what they were asking at the yard sale um and these sold in just an hour or two of listing i listed them i think for 35 or so and um, either I sent an offer, I can't remember, or someone sent me an offer, but for 30, and super, super happy to take that in just like an hour of being listed. And on they went. All right, let's move on to eBay real quick before we do the numbers. All right, so Lucky Brand, this was from last week as well. Um, very, very simple piece, but had all that kind of open crochet detail down the arms and across the neckline, size medium. Um, I listed it for $18.99. I actually took a best offer of $15, but again, that was only listed for maybe like two days, so nice, quick turnaround time. Um, this item, what did I take? I think I took $19 for this. Oh, I must be missing it. I'm missing an item, and I'm going to tell you what it was because it's not here right now. Um, it was a plush animal, and it was a uh, Fisher Price puffer lump. It's in my haul videos, um, and he was. You can even go to my store if you really want to see what it looks like, or you can just go on and put vintage, um, vintage Fisher Price puffer lump elephant, and you'll see exactly what he looks like. Um, and he sold for forty dollars. So I'm going to tell you that now, in case you want to check it out. I'm sorry the image isn't here. I don't know how that kind of slipped through the cracks, but um, you can just Google those terms there, and he will pop up. And yes, forty dollars. He was pre-owned. He had his sunglasses, but he was out of the box. It was a pretty good turnaround. So I was happy with him. All right, let's carry on now. <laughs> an actor or professional okay an anthropology top um lith lith i'm not sure how you say that let me show you what it looks like there we go um really really cute like folksy feel to it with a smocked waistline um a little bit of a sort of almost like a corset look to it though it did not have boning or structure so i could not call it a corset i took a best offer of 19 because it's been listed now for about two months or so and i figured that was quite average for an anthropology top um, J. Crew black and white bow print. This was a 100% merino wool, but it was a size extra small. And I only say but because those um, smaller sizes do tend to take a little bit longer to sell sometimes in my experience. Um, someone offered me $13.50. Again, this was a very, very low cost item for me. And I was happy to go ahead and take that. And I should say as well, buyer paid shipping on all of these items. Um, this was a very nice sale. So um, I came across this lady right here and I have another one as well that is still listed 
Um, and I found them at a rummage sale that was really close to my house, just like in the toy section. And when I flipped her around, let me see if I can find, there you go. Um, it said pull up. And I didn't know anything about this. This was completely new to me, but um, I could tell just from looking at her and touching her and her, particularly her costume, her outfit, that there was quality behind it. Um, unfortunately, she did have some hair issues, matting more than, well, not really even matting, it's just that the, the ringlets, the curls had kind of come loose, as it were. Um, so that was her main issue there. Um, this is what the back of the head looks like, if that helps anyone as well. Um, she did have some costume pieces that were missing, her shoes were missing. Um, but overall, so that she was in good condition, she does have a mechanism where you could make the eyes blink like one at a time, or um, wink, I suppose, one at a time, or blink together. And there was also part of the mechanism, I think, where you can like have their eyes fixed closed, and then, I don't know, it has, it's a whole thing but they were really really beautiful as you can see from the pictures um as she list i listed her i put them on auction first of all and um i got a lot of watches but no bites so then i moved to bite now i listed her high and uh, 99.99 was on the higher end especially because she's missing a few components of her costume and because of the hair issue that someone is going to have to sort out um it took a little bit of research but she turned out to be the classic classical alice as in alice in wonderland sepia version um in monochrome if that helps as well and uh, i had someone offer me 60 dollars a while ago and i counted at 80 and they ghosted um and i was really disappointed i definitely kicked myself and thought i should have just taken it and then she sat for a few more weeks and then someone came along and offered me 55 and they explained what they were going to do with her she was going to be a custom they needed to buy some other pieces and whatever so i went ahead and actually counted i thought about it and then i counted at 65 and just said, you know, would you be happy to meet me here? I'm happy to give you a discount for those reasons. I didn't hear from them for a couple of hours, and I got really nervous and started kicking myself again. But they accepted. I'm so glad. And off she went. I hope that she is perfect for what they need. Um, and, yeah, here's to hoping. But she was a really cool piece. It was a... Uh, it was definitely interesting. I've definitely learned a lot just by sort of a you know, researching and things like that, all the different dolls out there. And if you find them new in the box, they can go for over 100 easily. Um, but yes, off she went. So she sold for 65 uh, Cynthia Rowley, this was a mistake at the thrift store. I think I paid like 5 to $6 for this maxi skirt, not really realizing that it was not a decent brand to resell. You live, you learn. And this was not that long ago. Um, I sold one right away for roughly the same price, but I took best offer of $12. So yes, not a big money maker whatsoever. Again, I will show you that label because I know that can be helpful. I think I just misunderstood my brands or something. And yes, I should not have bought it. And um, this Talbot's piece was from a fill, uh, yeah, filler bag at a rummage sale. It was really, really pretty. As you can see, it has the butterfly like in it's not just butterflies though there's like actually like bugs and stuff all over it like see all the beetles and things like that it was a really neat sweater and then it had this button detail all the way down the back here as well pretty cool size large um it sold for the full asking price of 24.99 plus the shipping next item is a flax maxi skirt with like an elastic waist and then this split side this was 100 percent linen flax is definitely a lag and look brand that's this word right here you want to put that in your title and description you can also use the word boho things like that it's kind of like the art teacher look is what i say um but it's sold for the price that you see here on sale of 35.99 plus shipping I think that was from a rummage sale as well. And um, this loft piece, I only picked up because it was 100% linen. It was like a kind of peachy coral color, really pretty. Um, yeah, uh, I think uh, I think it may actually have had a one little spot, unfortunately. Yes, it did, right down there, like the teeny tiniest little spot. Um, but someone still offered 15, and I was happy to take that as well. All right, we're getting there, hang in there. Uh, Lane Bryan, I think one of my viewers bought this. And if you're watching, thank you ever so much for buying something from me. And I hope that you love it. Um, it was a really pretty Lane Bryant top just from this last haul. And the, it was like a sort of tiered, layered type bell sleeve. It was really, really nice. And it was a size 14, 16. So that sold nice and quickly. I took best offer of $16. And this piece was a little bit of a fail as well. So this was actually the first ever cabby piece I found that was the newer tag that so many people talk about. Not really new anymore. It's several years old now, but um, I was quite excited to find that square tag as opposed to the long rectangular one. Um, unfortunately, this piece was just apparently not one of the good pieces. It had like a crochet type lace uh, detail down the sleeve. Um, yeah, it just sat and sat. I had a list of $32.99. I kept checking my comps and I felt like it was fairly reasonable, but just no one ever, you know, 
took the bait, as it were. So someone offered me 16 and I went ahead and took it because it's literally been over a year at this point and it needs to move on. <laughs> um, this Bowden piece, someone offered me 20 and I accepted it. It had like a tree print all over it, which was kind of cool, almost like a like a woodsy print. Um, but again, this item has sat for quite a long time, so very happy to receive an offer. Um, this loft ruched shift dress it was such a nice like basic piece like you know flattering with the ruching and things like that but when it comes to loft I tend to try to either stick to the like plus sizes like larger sizes the um very classic structured career wear or the like novelty prints and even then it can still sit for me personally so someone offered me ten dollars on this I was happy to take it at that point this piece has been in my closet and in my ebay store for quite a long time i do like selling these older items even for ten dollars i'm grateful for it but i just don't think this piece had enough going for it to make it a sort of quick or higher sale and um, these j jill pants they're the wherever sort of offshoot of j jill you can kind of see they're the wherever co um collection or yeah, collection. Um, the J. Jill has a lot of different things like Pure Jill, uh, Love Linen, all that kind of stuff. And those are the ones I prefer to buy wherever I will pick. Sometimes, especially these loungy, like wide leg pants can do quite well. Um, and I took $15 as an offer for these, which I'm quite happy with. Alan Edmonds. So these are a great shoe to pick up. Unfortunately, these had some wear to the toes and the tops, as you can see here, and I just did not take the time or put the effort in to give them love. Um, you can also see at the back of the shoe, like there is some definite wear, which was highlighted in my photos and my description as well, um, to the actual inner lining. So they definitely had some sort of cosmetic issues um, that I chose not to deal with. I listed for $49.99. They've sat for a while. Someone offered me $30, and I went ahead and took them. Hopefully someone can breathe some new life into them that sort of know what they're doing a bit more than I when it comes to men's shoes. Um, Hot Cotton, this is a brand that I really enjoy selling. This was another linen piece. Again, lag and look being a keyword, size extra large, great bold floral print. I do enjoy selling this brand. It tends to move fairly quickly for me when it has a linen, actually without linen does, but linen helps a lot. And then that kind of extra large and up tends to move quite well. And I took best offer of 19 for this shirt. Uh, Lane Bryant, size 22, just a very simple teal green blazer. Um, admittedly, not the best photo to show off the piece. <laughs> I think I could have worked a bit better on that. Um, 18 is what I accepted, and it went in, I think, a padded flat rate, which is not too bad. And the buyer paid shipping as well. Okay, this piece was a, I think it was, new, yeah, it was new with tag still, Zephyr was the um, brand, which is not the most desirable sort of vintage, there you go, you can see it better, um, vintage sort of 90s brand. There are definitely some out there that do a lot better. It was Carolina um, Gamecock, South Carolina. And it sat for a little while, had a few watches, had listed at 50 because it was new with tags, just kind of feel the water. Someone offered me, um, I think it was 25 in the end, um, plus the shipping, I went ahead and took that because it's been just a little while. Um, a lot of vintage books. These were like the learn to read books. I don't think it was a full set. It was just 19 within the set. Um, and again, someone offered me 15 and I sent them media mail with buyer paying shipping. And I think I just picked these up at um, a filler bag at one point. And then the last thing I'm going to show you is this that I picked up last weekend, Mario Party 9, just for the original Nintendo Wii. Um, I sold this really quickly. It literally sold within 30 seconds, which of course I went back and was like, oh God, did I, did I underprice it drastically? But I don't think that I did. Um, I reached out my comps and I'm pretty happy with it because I did sell it untested and I sort of disclosed it's untested. I do not have an original Wii here. I don't really have the means to get my hands on one. So I don't have a lot of choice when it comes to uh, selling it tested unless I want to lie which I'm not going to do um so yes untested but it had the inserts which helps um yeah and so 30 seconds onto a sale not bad at all and I think I paid a dollar for that at yard sale this last week so yay okay so that was a total of 39 sales for the week of June 17th through 23rd um, which averages me five to six sales per day. Like I said, my average cost of goods, when everything is evened out annually, what I give to my CPA is usually a dollar. So that's what I'm going to say for each of these items. I'm going to say I spent $39, uh, $39 this week towards my inventory. So my gross sales for the week was $883.42. Like I said, 
$39 cost of goods or whatever. And my fees, which I count as 20%, Poshmark is 20%, eBay is less than that, but I like to keep it consistent and also I have an eBay store. So there's a cost involved there. So I'm going to say 20% across the board average fees is $176.68. So that will put my net profit at uh, at around $667.74, which is not too bad at all. Currently, I'm listing an average of 10 items, 10 new items per day. Sometimes I do a little bit more, sometimes I do a little bit less. Um, that's kind of where I've evened out right now, and I'm finding that's given me some nice, consistent net profits of over $500 for the most part. So uh, I'll keep you tuned in, as it were, um, to see how if that's consistent for me as things keep going throughout the summer. So far, summer slowdown, touch wood, um, has not been too much of a thing for me. We'll see how it goes. Hopefully, July and August, though, things start to pick up even more as people go back to school, fall starts rolling in, all the good stuff. All right, you guys, thank you so much uh, for watching. I appreciate it so much. Let me know how your sales and your sourcing is going down in the comments. Um, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet and come back and hang out some more and I will catch you in the next video. Bye, you guys.